Howdy, and welcome to Inputs Outputs. I'm Jeff Sengpil with Keycode Media. Today, we're looking at LiveView Air Control. LiveView has been a leading brand in the wireless transmission of video and broadcast solutions, supporting news, sports, production companies, and many others with their unique cellular bonded field units that can bring a crisp and reliable video and audio signal from anywhere in the world to your production control room environment. The family of field units include the LiveView Solo, the LU300, LU600, and the LU800, which provide a range of sources, video quality options all the way from HD to 4K, and add-on features like tally lights, video return, PTZ camera control, and multicam. For every unit out in the field, there is a required receiver that decodes the signal and puts it into your control room video switcher. The use of these field units to bring in remote guest interviews from anywhere without sacrificing quality has skyrocketed over the past 24 months. Which brings us to our topic today, LiveView Air Control. LiveView Air Control is a broadcast orchestration cloud solution designed for live production workflows and managing the remote contributors. The solution effortlessly delivers flawless live programs of any size using existing teams and technical infrastructure. This tool connects the talent with the producers, director, and crew. You can have virtual green room discussions and with a single click, make that guest available for air. Okay, the way this is gonna work, we're gonna have an eight minute video of Chris Perry breaking down all the features within air control. We're gonna have Kong joining us virtually to help us get into the specifics of how air control will help productions with their orchestration needs. Thanks for joining us, Kong. Let's queue up this first clip that's going to dive deep into user management and the address book. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Perry, product manager for the LiveView Air Control platform. Today, I want to give you a short introduction to Air Control. It begins in the configuration screens. Let's start with user management. All users inside of Air Control are LiveView Central users. Now, they can be any user type inside of LiveView Central. And once they get added to Air Control, they get applied a role. Now, in this case, roles are made up of a series of permissions that are designed to be very granular and allow you the ultimate flexibility in carving out exactly what each person inside of Air Control should be able to do. Once you've added your users to the Air Control platform, we can then add addresses to our address book. In this case, these would be guests that are coming on Air. We click the Add New Address Book button. We enter their name, email address, title, and phone number, and save them in the secure database. Now, one thing to note about the address book is that this is an explicit permission. All users have to have the address book permission to view the address book. Otherwise, in other places in the platform, all that's displayed will be the name and title of the address book entry. All right, so let's get into the address book first of all. So if you're going to add users to the, to, the, to the pool, to the database, is it going to generate an email alert to them? Are they going to need to then create an account or download any software at that point? Uh, what's the end user experience going to be for guests for a show? All right, so the address book is more for the orchestrator. They set up all their different guest contacts. They'll pre-fill it in with their email address, their phone number, maybe their position. And then it exists in the air control database. Once they launch, launch the actual air control show, they'll be able to go in there and add the different users that they already have predefined or add it at that certain time. Once they send out the invite email, the users will get an email. They'll be able to click on the link to join the air control show. And then they'll get two prompts. One is to join from a web client. And then the other one is if they have a MacBook, a Mac OS, uh, they can go ahead and uh, install the thin client for the Mac side. So, but 
you know, most of the time people will join through a web browser with a one click uh, type of deal. And um, the email gets sent out, they join the show, and then they will be able to talk to the orchestrators. Sounds good. Everything's nice and quiet until it's it's ready to go. So right. next question, um, it looks like the role breakdown for user management is managing shows, routing, booth access, IFB, um, address book, show admin, on air, and reports. There's also a breakdown by producer, booker, director, technical director, audio ops, and maintenance. Is is there a, a full customizability of the role section? And what are the possibilities you see um, going forward with being able to define roles for the for a team? So the role section, you can define any certain role for different individuals. And like you said, uh, you know, within the access system, we have different accesses that the users can have. Uh, the Administrator can decide what type of uh, role they have and then what access they have. It's all customizable. So they can have as little as they want or as many different defined roles as they need. Very cool. All right, let's jump into the next section, building a show. Now, once you've added your users and your address book entries, it's time to build a show. That's done through the Shows tab. In this case, I can click the Add New Show button. I can give the show a name. I can give it a start, date, and time. I can set a duration and define the pre-show and post-show windows. Now, the pre-show and post-show windows define how early that program could be joined. Think of this how early a meeting could be joined. And the post-show window determines when that show moves from an active to an archive state. Once I save this into the system, I then go through and add my feeds. Now, the feeds page is all about video return sources, as fed by the LiveView video return server. We begin with the program feed. We can select whichever program feed we want. We can select the prompter feed as well, if we have one. And then we can define our multi-view layout. The system comes with five different multi-view options, from being able to display a single window, a dual split, a quad split, two up with eight underneath, and finally, a nine-way split. Once I've selected my multi-view layout, I can then configure the under-monitor display labels and define which feed should go where. In this case, I'll put program in my top left. I will put prompter in my top right. And then I can choose other feeds that might be hitting a live view video return server. When we're done here, we hit save, and now we're ready to move on. The next tab in this interface is the Channels tab. This is a list of Live View output channels. These could be channels that are located on-prem or in the cloud, outputting SDI, NDI, SRT, RTMP. Any Live View channel that you currently have today can work with Air Control with no need to upgrade the platform. To begin, I select which channels I want, and I add them directly into my show, and I can save this. This is a management tool. We give you the ability to select channels that should be in shows, not because we want to limit it, but because it's sometimes it's necessary. Maybe you have two shows going on. Control room A should have the first four channels. Control room B might need the second four. And by limiting these channels inside of the air control show, we're able to give the user ultimate flexibility as they build their production dock. The last two tabs have to do with people, users and participants. Users are your crew. So I can select the crew members that I need to add to the show and add them. They will then be able to join the show through the production dock once it's time for that show to start. The participants tab allows me to select which guests I need to have in my show. I can select which guests I would like, I can add them into my show, and then I can invite them. Now it's great because I can invite them directly through the air control platform. I simply select the guests that I want to invite, and I hit the Send Invite to Selected Participants button. If I want to invite all of them, I can hit Select All and invite all of them. Now, it actually uses an integrated template right within the air control system. You can see this template on the right-hand side. You were invited to participate in show, and then we populate the show name. Dear participant name, please join show show name by pressing this link. Best regards, the show name team. This template is customizable so that you can make sure that your guests get exactly the invitation that you want them to have. All right, Kong, so when setting up return feeds, Chris mentioned the LiveView return server. Um, is it 
at that point logical to say that, hey, let's set up a return off of a production switcher uh, so you can program and then a variable section. Um, and how many how many choices of inputs are you going to be able to select with a live view return server? So the video return server itself has uh, two channel capability, two SDI inputs. Uh, some people put it on the router as a destination so they can route the different sources into the actual uh, video return server channel itself. Uh, so one server will uh, accommodate two uh, video feeds. If you need more video feeds, you just keep on stacking video return server. And then as Chris mentioned, there was the quad split, a dual split, quad, four, six split, eight split, uh, that you can kind of define on your production side so that you can see everything that you might need. So it, it sounds there kind of like it makes sense to maybe have, you know, the equivalent of almost a multi-view coming off of your production switcher that's going into, you know, input one. It could be program, or probably will be most of the time, but also it could be assigned other things. And then prompter, um, just from a production management kind of standpoint, that seems to make sense to me. And then it, when you stack the return servers, how are those discovered by the platform? Uh, do they, are they connected via networking or is there some sort of video connection that goes between them? Well, uh, what happens whenever we connect the different servers up, they are already in your LiveView Central account. They, we already know about it. Uh, everything is already there. So whenever you went into the feed section, th that feed session lists all your different video return servers itself. And then you drag over the ones that you want to display on this session of the Air Control Show. So it, it seems that when you're not just planning a show, but you're planning productions for the future, you need to make sure you plan for the amount of sources you're going to need and have enough live view return servers available to do that, understanding that there are two sources apiece. Right. So, you know, all your different server channels, you do want to add them into your group, the ones that you're going to use because you know, that your guests are most likely going to be either on a unit or a laptop. You want to be able to route them into the server channel so that you can get the SDI feed to go back into your house studio or router or switcher. And, uh, you know, video return as well. It's what do you want the uh, guests to see? If you want them to see this certain video channel, you better, you've got to have it ready so that you can route that to the guest itself as the program feed or the teleprompter feed or maybe whatever video you want to put on or the guest to see. That sounds good. So um, getting to the invitation that is sent out when a user needs to, to begin and go live um, or join the show, is it possible for the system to create a link that then goes into an email, um, say on a separate, like a, like a Gmail or an Outlook email that then goes out or is it using a built-in mail server to send all of those out to um, the various guests? It's going to be a, one of our live email servers that sends out the email to the guest itself. So, you know, we got to make sure that, you know, there's no blockage on the email chain from, uh, from, the, from our account, our live view account to the end user itself. So just be mindful of that. Okay. So will that be sent from a cloud or is that going to be sent from an on-prem kind of setup? It's a, it's a cloud server that will send out. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So the, no firewall rules to worry about or email rules to worry about is as long as, as long as the recipient can get it from the cloud, we're golden. Correct. Sometimes they block different addresses and, uh, you know, just make sure they don't have the live view TV address blocked. Understandable. All right, let's get into section three, how to launch the show and get into the production doc. When all is said and done, it's time to launch the show. Now, if you're already in the pre-show or active part of the show window, you've got the launch show button in the top right-hand side of the user interface. If it's not quite time yet, you can go back to the shows list. It'll show you a list of shows. You can find which show you want to launch and hit the start show button. This will launch you into the production dock, our single pane of glass user experience for managing all your show elements. On the left-hand side, you'll see those guests that we invited. If they've already joined the show, you'll be able to see them. In fact, you can even throw them in pre-fade listen and talk directly to them from the production talk. If they haven't joined the show yet, they'll just appear and say not in show. When they join, immediately appear, you'll be able to see and speak with them. 
Now when it's time to move one of those guests to a Ready for Air channel, I simply drag and drop them into the Ready for Air channel, and that establishes the high quality LRT feed from the guest's machine to your LiveView server. This ensures completely simple operation for all users in the workflow. Now the production dock offers a number of systems of control for managing guests in real time. First of all, I can kick any participant at any time simply by pressing the kick button next to their name. This will remove the participant from the show and invalidate their invite link. If they need to rejoin the show, you'll need to send them another invitation. Once I'm in the production dock, I never have to leave. I can add new users, crew members to my show. I can also view my address book and add new participants to my show right from the production dock. If I select a participant and invite them, it'll use that template that I talked about just a moment ago, and they'll receive that with the link that they can click and then join the show. Now let's say you're in a breaking news situation, and you might need to add somebody who's not already a member of your address book. Instead of having to go back to the address book and add them, you can add them right from the production dock through the new participant tab. Enter their name, title, an email address, whether or not you want to add them to your address book and invite them to the show. Now once I'm done with a participant, I can hit the eject button and it removes them from a live view channel. This returns them to the guest users column where you can continue to coordinate with them using the pre-fade listen and talk buttons right within the user interface. And at any point in time, send them back to a live view output channel, again, simply by dragging and dropping that feed. Now Air Control has an integrated production booth that allows you to talk and listen just as though you were sitting in the same room, even in this virtualized environment. Now the talk and listen settings are different for the production booth than they are for the guests and participants. This means that you can listen to a participant, talk in the production booth, talk to a participant, listen in the production booth, at whatever combination of listen and talk you require in order to orchestrate the participants of the show, you can do that right from within the production dock. Finally, back in the show configuration screens, I can view my current shows, but also my archive shows. I can select any show I wish, Using this eyeball icon, I can see exactly what happened in that show, what my feeds were, which channels were used, which users and participants took place in the show. And at any point in time, if I want, I can duplicate this show, either from an archived show or from a uh, current show. In this case, when I hit the duplicate button, I can set a new start date and time in the future, and that's it. It saves all of the settings that I had from this previous show. Feeds channels, users, everything that was in there is now part of this new show record. All right, so you know we're in the middle of the show. The, the first question I've got there is, are the folks who are in the production dock able to only see or hear the, the people back at the, back at the production uh, facility? Or are they able to see each other kind of like being in a physical green room where you got you know everybody sitting together on the couch? So first off, this, this whole air control can support up to 50 clients, uh, whether they be a guest or the production booth itself. So 50 users at the moment. Uh, the, produ the users will not see the production, doc or the production people at the current moment, but uh, in the future, we are trying to get a green room to where more people can get it. This is the first revision of the software. A lot more different features are going to go into this application uh, as it de develops more. Um, the guests will not see any video. All they will see is either the program or, or, or the other VR channel, whichever VR channel you want to share with the user but they'll be able to hear anybody in the production that hits the pre-fade listener and the talk button so that they can listen and talk to them. They'll be able to hear them, but they just will not be able to see it. Understandable. Okay, so um, on the production dock, when you, when you clicked into it, it kind of jumped to a different window. Um, is production dock really a separate application than the user management tools we were looking at earlier? The user management, Tool is a part of air control, but once the show is launched and then the production booth is available, it goes into a different window within the show. So one is more of the setup, and then once you launch the show, it opens it up in a new web browser. Awesome. So if you're if you're assuming that users are out in the field with a live view field unit, are they also going to need to have the air control application open somewhere? 
um, as well. How is that going to work with configuring talent IFB and all the other settings that come with uh, the rest of LiveView's suite? Currently, uh, you know, the Air Control app does not have any unit integration in it yet, but it is soon to coming to where we put the units on uh, Air Control as well, be able to see, talk to them, and use your uh, mix minus to send audio back and forth. But at the current moment, only the only people that we can transmit from is either the iOS, Android, or a web page to a uh, you know a regular computer. Uh, the MacBook has its own client, uh, and uh, you know those are the different options you have as far as uh, launching the show. Cool. So um, it's mentioned a few times LRT. How is that different from SRT and other IP-based protocols? So LRT is LiveView Reliable Transport. It's a proprietary encoding technique that only LiveView can encode in and decode in. It has many different features in it, like forward error correction, uh, timing, bit rate management, different things like that to handle the, the strains of cellular bonding, the different network conditions, uh, so that we can always keep a video uh, playing uh, with in sync audio. Okay, Kong. So this just came out last week, but what's going to be the new hotness on the roadmap? So air control, as you mentioned, was released last week. Uh, this is the first revision. We got the basics of it done. Uh, there's going to be many new things that get implemented with it as far as maybe the green room so that the users can all each guest can talk to each other, see each other, see the production booth different things like that, break out into different sessions. Uh, we're going to integrate the field units so that you can use the field units as a guest as well, uh, because some people rent uh, equipment for their guests to use themselves, and then they would like to also be implemented into this air control app so that they don't have to do multiple things. And, uh, you know, we're going to implement a lot of different things. We're always listening to our clients as far as you know, what they would like to see. And if it makes sense, we usually put it into the system. So feel free to make your request. Kong, thanks a lot for joining us today. It was great to go over this with you. If you've got questions about air control, please don't hesitate to reach out to us here at Key Code Media. Um, we're, you know, on phone, on the web, uh, just fill out our contact form and we'll have someone get back to you and we can talk air control with you.